action. You know, as a kid, I loved this show called Get Smart. Did you ever hear that show? Uh, I haven't, no. Well, it was Get Smart, and what was his name? Um, Maxwell Smart. And Maxwell Smart would say, Hello, Frank. Nice to see you again today. What do you got for me? And Frank would say, Well, Maxwell, let me read your horoscope. He's like, Why not? He's like, Open up this book. And he'd open up the book, and this gas would come out of it. Like, Shh. <laughs> and he would like fall over, and then he'd wake up in some like prison somewhere. He's like, Oh, the old gas in the horoscope book trick. And I think of security like that sometimes, right? It's just like, there's behavior patterns that you have. You go into the store every day. You get a cup of coffee, right? You go out. You walk down the street. All these behavior patterns become just part of almost like your workflow, almost your life. And I think of security that way sometimes, too, because we get so accustomed to doing things day in and day out. Sure. And that, to me, seems like the biggest trick that companies face is, like, how do I avoid falling into this behavior pattern that's going to end up with me realizing that I'm in big trouble. And so we're talking about Spring for Shell, correct? Yeah, that's right. Maybe we could talk about in that context when you're showing us the demo. Well, sure. I mean, uh, let's think about um, the fact that you know, vulnerabilities are, unfortunately, a, a current occur occurrence. We're yeah. becoming normalized by them. And now and again, something comes along that surprises us. And you know, just going back previously to log for shell, shell for example, log for J, um, you know, that, that was something that obviously was very prevalent uh, within applications, but also was in the, we were in the position where uh, you were typically, you typically had it in a, in, a, in a folder that you needed root access to because you were logging to it. So it became even more dangerous as a result of that, right? Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to take you through Spring for Shell, which, which came after, didn't receive the kind of notoriety, but certainly got uh, people worried. And um, yep. here within this, uh, this application, you see that I'm, I'm uh, using the Spring for Shell vulnerability uh, in which to go ahead and do a reverse shell uh, on this instance. So, okay. uh, so we're, we're going to go ahead and actually just uh, netcat here, go and have a look where I've now immediately got visibility of the destination file system and, and go about and take a look at a different uh, different directories and and do whatever I like. So, so what do I what do I do about this? I mean, um, security is uh, you know one of that common themes that you said about security every day is starting with visibility and then going about a way in which to prevent it. Right. So uh, things are are no different with the way that we look at things in in Prisma Cloud as well. Uh, we take a look at uh, our given visibility around that particular vulnerability, understand, for example, uh, where, you know, where, which package was it included within, um, you know, which layers of, the, uh, of a Docker file, for example, it resides within, uh, are there any misconfigurations around the container image that uh, could also lead to more risks, such as I mentioned with the log4j risk. Here we've got uh, the images being created using a, a root user. So let me ask this question from what you're showing me here. What is your mission? Ah, to make each day safer than the last, right? To make each day safer than the last. And then what values do you uphold that we would see reflected in this demo? Well, you're going to go ahead and see a combination of um, how we collaborate. You know, as a company, we're very much around collaboration. Uh -huh. That, you know, Prisma Cloud is well known for being very extensible and programmable. You can get data in and out very easily, APIs, Terraform providers. Um, you've got you know, standard output, syslog. Any way you want to get data in or out, it's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. uh, it executes, so it goes ahead, provi provides protection, mm -hmm. uh, preventative controls to stop you actually uh, these attacks being, being a reality in different parts within the environment. Um, it's got integrity around those feeds that it consumes. We've got a very high uh, assurance with our customers around you know, how many false negatives and false positives that we see within, within, uh, within the, uh, the, the, the vulnerability spectrum. So very much aligned to Palo Alto Networks uh, values, very much so. That's great. 
Okay, that's a good start. So let's take a look, uh, for example, at uh, well, securing this against this vulnerability with some some runtime security. And actually, what we've got here is a, a way in which to go about and define policy for what do I do the next time that somebody tries to issue a reverse shell from a from a vulnerable container. And in this case, I can actually be very specific around the actions, whether I want to say, for example, stop a process or whether I want to have the entire uh, container just killed within a pod, for example, that instance of it. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and perform uh, something similar here right now. So we're, we saw a reverse shell attack. Uh, we're going to block that. There's also some lateral movement as well. And we're going to go. What is a reverse shell attack? Reverse shell attack is typically where you uh, use a vulnerability in order to uh, to initiate a shell back to yourself. Okay. So you you've got to be listening uh, over here. So for example, on my on my vulnerable uh, application, you see I was listening on a given port there, in order to do that, and that allows me in which to uh, to call back to the source machines that I have under my administrator control in order to do that. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and listen again and initiate uh, the attack. Okay. Um, so we, uh, you see, immediately I'm back into the uh, into shell again. Something has prevented me from getting access to those libraries. Uh, we'll just try again because uh, you may find that, yep, I'm actually getting no reply. I've ended up uh, setting the most restrictive option against this vulnerable container in which to go about and actually uh, block it, which means actually killing the container rather than just preventing the process ongoing. As part of a Kubernetes cluster, that you know, let's say we've got a pod with six images, uh, six instances of a given image running. That particular uh, instance of a container will be essentially killed, and the pod will obviously restart that that container back in the the containers uh, in, back in the pod of six again. So uh, it's it's really a case of only looking at the the images uh, or well, the given instances of containers that actually were uh, were attacked. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll see that uh, we we got some visibility around that within the logs as well. So if we come down to uh, let's first of all have a look at our runtime uh, logs. You can see there's a reverse shell yeah. attack here. Uh, the nice thing about Prisma Cloud is really this forensics or this kind of flight recorder, as it's sometimes called, uh, in which to go ahead and understand uh, what actually led up to this event. And we got a full visibility of not only. Uh, what led up to this particular reverse shell um, event, but actually also any other events that are ongoing all the time. Uh, it's done with very low overhead as well. And because we're inserted into the container runtime, uh, we're not running a kernel module, we're not inserting binaries into other images. We're literally just uh, understanding uh, through the set capabilities that we configured our daemon set with. So this is the container forensic data then, so uh, because it's a forensics, you're able to look Almost like an audit of the container itself. Every container, regardless of whether it was involved in an incident or not. Right. We're about a minute and a half left. Sure. What is it that we should know before we go? Well, uh, what, what I'd like you to know before I go? Yeah. Uh, I'd like you to know that uh, not only are we offering runtime security, but we're also going to go ahead and do application security, prevent OS top 10 type attacks like this. OK. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the running configuration and traffic and identities around your uh, cluster. Uh, so for example, here, um, you got a holistic view of all of the traffic coming in oh, and nice. out. And uh, also, uh, what, what? because I was using some uh, a, a, a Tor Ghost, I was able to actually invoke some, some uh, suspicious sources as well at the same time that are then flagged, uh, in which uh, we, we use our own data, Palo Alto Networks, and third-party data, again, uh, in the spirit of collaboration, to understand what uh, what is what is suspicious and how okay. why it's suspicious. So, really, what I'd like to leave you with is Prisma Cloud provides a full code to cloud capability around securing your cloud native assets, your public cloud, and uh, there's a lot in terms of the build and deploy phases that I didn't have time to show here today as well. Uh, but essentially, if you're securing Kubernetes. You need to secure any other workloads in a cloud-native setting, regardless of whether they're on-premises or in the cloud. Prisma Cloud provides preventative controls, code to cloud, uh, at scale. Excellent. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.